Abusi awo she eh modin a obi bo na onsu wodu ho atoto na suya kakra kakra na wonim se ebra gana eh tvet stem education and free education himself itself itself eba ye no ama wodu obi ba gana no mu suya kwan ya gana e faso ye no for example south africa ni other countries ani nyina na ne ose ya o adichum the former education minister doctor Oche che mo pa anu oche se. Se di e gana ye si ama adisuyan ya akono some years ago. From bare seven years e ban. Ah. E ne yi anu di e owo jidi e ma pa se e be tu aswa. Because o she se di e na ama hu duwa so. Even the STEM education na. Dokte yo se di chum di ba yin anado fu anu so bu anu mani timi e implementi yin. O ko e wya si ni na nye wang wase na anu ado ko summit. E wo America o so. Na a woman standing innovation. Na just say, my mom is a ma doctor your said it true. Uh Jumadi O Bobi Papa Papa Papa. Nene on it join news at chum commodity. Sema would war at to die nay and the pin near Bemo beam. How they do never for baton. Sign and yema a CTA. Yang kwa go to doctor your said it to me sema or dear to ja about a university. Uh they have a program that guides and mentors education ministers. And the first workshop they ask all of us to create what's called a legacy statement. My legacy statement was to make Ghana uh, the best nation in STEM education, one of the best in the world okay. in STEM education. And when I reflect upon the legacy statement that I shared with the University of Harvard and see that we're able to do it. Mm -hmm. um, you see, STEM has always been something that you hear uh, presidents talked about, the 60-40, famous 60-40 ratio of 60% of students are the tertiary in the STEM-related fields and 40% in the humanities. And um, unfortunately, uh, it had been, for the most part, lip service. Because I don't seem to understand how you have about 14% of your students in the high school enrolled in science. But when they get to the university, you expect 60% of them to become science-related um, uh, students. I mean, it was just a talk. So we had to begin to take a look at what is going on around the world. And of course, I always say I'm one of the luckiest education ministers in the world, having taught in the classroom, got an opportunity to develop schools in America, that kind of experience, and doing a PhD in education policy and administration. So what I through and the leadership of the president looked at was STEM education, the key to the future of Ghana's transformation. Not just an education, but we are talking about how does education change the fortunes of your country. So if your sense of agency is the transformation of Ghana, and you happen to be the education minister, you are looking at what are the gaps? Because in education, you have to look at access, you have to look at the quality of the education system and then look at the relevance of the education system. When the education system is not relevant to the socioeconomic transformation of your country, it's education to nowhere. All the students can pass the exams and people jubilate that their children have passed the exam. But if you happen to be the education minister, you are concerned about a mind producing the people that can really champion transformation of Ghana. So that is what led us to STEM education. The emphasis on STEM was to make sure that in this 21st century, in this fourth industrial revolution, are we going to create a competitive economy? Are we really going to change the fortunes of Ghana? So when you hear STEM education, it's not just children coming to school. When you see them uh, doing robotics, you see them flying drones, you see them doing things that we've never done before. It's creating the next generation workforce in the 21st century, in the fourth industrial revolution, who will lead the transformation of Ghana. And that was what my focus on about. Mm -hmm. If you look at Vietnam, Vietnam is making great strides in industrialization. Okay. Now, J Vietnam has 93 million population. They produce 100,000 engineers every year. Now, Vietnam is the toast of East Asia. Every industry, industrial giants are flocking to Vietnam. In fact, the last time I checked, 
Um, Samsung has its largest manufacturing plant, plant anywhere in the world in Vietnam. Okay. Now, Ghana, with over 30 million population, in a very good year has 7,000 engineers graduating. If you look ratio and proportion, we should be doing over 30,000. Engineers. Yes. Because it's engineering have so many fields. Uh, Software uh, uh, engineering. Uh, let me take you back to the, the point about STEM. Now, you, when you refer to the man who went to, the, the Chinese leader yes. who, went to, who went to Japan mm -hmm. and, and came back to China, he tackled the teachers, right? Because he said he wanted to change how it is done. But I didn't see you do much of... Maybe you didn't hear me talk about it. Okay. I, I, I'm, so, I'm so happy to tell you that the current Director General of Ghana Education Service, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Professor Davis, he was one person that I tasked to develop a STEM, a bachelor's degree in STEM education at the University of Cape Coast, and he did. Okay. So he put it together, brought it to me <laughs> for a review. He had done a review with all his professors, and today I'm happy that Cape Coast has submitted, at the time I was living, they have submitted their curricula for training of STEM teachers to GTEC. Mm. We also have two STEM colleges of education that were building at the time I was living, mm. one at Karaga and one at Tepa in Ashanti region. Mm. And this was to train the next generation of STEM teachers in Ghana. So yes, we, we were seriously looking at how do you train and also uh, we have a number of projects that were ongoing. No, but I thought that would have been your first focus, to train the teachers to handle the You see, training. when you are Ghana, you don't have a lot of time. Okay. You do the two at the same time. Mm. So, for example, there were um, teachers who were being trained through Televic, which was a funding uh, regime that we have from Belgium. They were training teachers across the country. Mm. TTEL, which is funded through MasterCard Foundation, was also training teachers across the country. So teachers who are now in their jobs currently have been, were being trained. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, we needed to lay a strong foundation to bring in more, uh, to train them so that they can uh, really do the job that they were supposed to do. OK. All right. So how many STEM schools do we have? Uh, we have the freestanding new ones that we built were about uh, I think 11 of them at the time that I was leaving office. Mm. But we also have STEM Fully centers. Completed. Yes. And, we also and have. Ready to be used. Ready to be used. Okay. But like um, Abomosu in Eastern Region, Kwase in Bono, uh, Bosom Tree Girls, uh, the ones, uh, the, the, we have other ones like uh, Pasempe in the uh, Northeast. So there are a number of them across the country. But we also have STEM centers in existing schools, like Goso, for example, has one that was about to be operationalized. So when you do the STEM center, you, you set up a center with all the equipment. Accra, Accra High mm -hmm. has one, uh, which, is, uh, which had been operationalized even about two years ago. Okay. Uh, it has started, okay. it had, sorry, it had all the STEM tools and equipment, um, and students at Accra High, as I speak with you, can take a course in engineering okay. at the high school level. Okay. And the one unique thing about the STEM centers is the fact that we offer opportunity for students in the neighborhood, that's what you see here, mm. for students in the neighborhood to come to the center and do uh, uh, software programming and allow, they were doing Scratch and other programs there. So it's not just for the high school students, but I wanted to create that pipeline uh, really from the lower levels all the way running uh, to the high school. So the STEM centers were not just for the high school, but also for the entire neighborhood of students uh, who come there and do um, um, scratch and other. So when you look at that, it's not just, uh, these are the high school students okay. who are doing robotics and doing engineering and all that, but also the local students from the busy schools can come get the opportunity uh, to come here. Okay. So there was a combination of the two that you have new schools being built, but also have STEM being infused into existing uh, schools. So if you go to those existing schools, like um, engineering center that we, we did in partnership with the old boys of Presec. Mm. If, if you go to, they have an engineering block <laughs> which we were about to operationalize, mm. and then we left government. Okay. But so I hope that 
there will be a continuation so that if you go to presec, you can start engineering mm -hmm. at the high school level. You don't want to wait till you go to the university. You catch them young. They get excited. Mm -hmm. So they don't apply to medicine, and if they don't get in, then they go to engineering. Mm -hmm. If you get a student who is uh, uh, really, really excited about engineering from high school, he will become a better engineer mm -hmm. than the person who didn't want to do engineering, but because he didn't get medicine, then he find himself in engineering. Yeah. One of the things talking about that that I'm excited about is what we were able to create called the pre-engineering program. Mm. You see, when I talk about the 60-40, and you don't have enough students who have done science, that means you can never get to the 60-40 unless you bring some innovation to the process. Yeah. Um, so what we did uh, which was profound was that we established a pre-engineering program. Mm. These are for students who did not do science in high school, but are desirous of becoming engineers. So what you do with that is that they go to the two universities that offer that. The now others are joining in UMAT and Pentecost University. Okay. We incentivize them through a grant program to do it. So when you go to UMAT this year, for example, I, I'm told there was a high demand for the pre-engineering. Okay. Uh, they accepted only 300 students from the large pool that applied. And the cutoff point was aggregate nine. So they have students with six, A1, 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 going to do pre-engineering from general arts, mm -hmm. from visual arts, from home economics. Okay. All of them are moving. And these are students who are determined to become engineers. So it was my idea mm -hmm. that don't block these students from getting to the engineering space. Mm. They may have not been counseled well at the high school. They got into general arts. They got into visual arts. They got into home economics. Don't stop them if they have the desire, because these are the people who become your innovators. So we open the floodgates of engineering mm -hmm. to this new group of students mm. who are desirous, but did not do science. Mm. And then they have a rigorous one-year program and in this one-year program, they are doing fixes, they are doing chemistry, they are doing mathematics, and introduction to engineering. At the end of the year, if they pass the examination set by the university, then they get a chance to enroll in level 100 engineering, whether it's civil engineering, mechanical engineering, computer engineering, any aspect of engineering, they get the opportunity okay. to enter uh, that space. The whole idea is that yeah. for us to 